Hey you guys, welcome back to the channel Physics Surgery and here we are in Physics Surgery Quickies where I bring forward to you small little concepts that will definitely make a difference in your preparation towards JE mains and advance and this time I brought forward a question from uh, the famous book, the one that we all respect, the concepts of physics, H.C. Verma, volume two, uh, from the page number 249, objective two question. It's a tricky one. And we'll try to see if there is any issue with the key in this particular question. A lot of students in the past have asked me about the final key for this question. So as we move along, we'll also understand something very important for your JE advanced examination. Okay, so here's the question. So before we move on with the question, so I'm overwhelmed with a lot of love and support that you have shown. I have requested for a certain number of likes last video uh, and thinking that uh, I would get a, a break because I've put a condition that if we reach 500 likes, I will immediately post a video. So I actually lost on the promise because I thought I will get a week's uh, rest, uh, but you people finished that off in one day and I had to actually work really hard to get some time out of my schedule to make this uh, special video. And uh, I will do the same thing. So I underestimated you at that point, maybe overestimated the conditions on the subscribers. So I'll change both of them a bit this time, right? So let's go ahead with maybe 1.5 K likes, that is 1,500 likes for this video and or you can say or 200 subscribers. Okay, so try to uh, give it a like, it's free and especially if you like the video and also share the content so that I do get the subscribers and we keep making greater and greater videos as we move along towards your preparation. Okay, so all and good, let's try to go ahead with the problem statement. You want to give it a try, pause the video, have a look in and then move forward. And we'll top the video with the two practice questions on a similar situations at the end of the video. Okay, a steady electric current is flowing through a cylindrical conductor. There are four options. Electric field at the axis of the conductor is zero. The magnetic field at the axis of the conductor is zero. Electric field in the vicinity of the conductor is zero. And the magnetic field in the vicinity of the conductor is zero. Okay, so these are the four options. This is more than one correct type of question in objective two. So you're supposed to mark the appropriate answers. Okay, so I hope you've given it a try. Let's try to see the concepts involved. First simple concept, but most of you know, that's why I'm going to skim through it very quickly, is to estimate the magnetic field part, okay? So in a straight conductor, which is cylindrical in nature, the B outside can be estimated by using Ampere's law, this particular loop, that is what we have written here. And B inside can be done using this Amperian loop. And when you do that calculation, we all know the standard result that we get for outside is mu naught I by two pi small r, r is the distance from the axis. And B inside comes out to be proportional to small r. Okay, so very simple calculation, which yields the idea that outside for steady current, the magnetic field is non-zero, whereas on the axis where you have to substitute r equal to zero, the magnetic field comes out to be zero, which are one of the two options that we had in the question. Okay, so no issue with this. The issue and more interesting thing comes for concept two, which is the electric field calculation. Okay, so I've taken a part of the circuit to depict on the right side of your uh, screen. There is a long cylinder, so minus infinity to plus infinity I've depicted. And we are considering that there is a current which is uniformly distributed, which is a J. Uh, current per unit area, uh, which is due to the electric field inside. We are using Ohm's law. So if you are using Ohm's law for points inside, we realize that inside the field has to be non-zero. So without uh, considering in the question, right, it is not mentioned anything. We are always uh, supposed to take the resistance is not equal to zero. So we are using Ohm's law. So the J has to be equal to sigma E, let's suppose, then field has to be non-zero. Okay, right. Performing the circulation along the path, which is taken here. Can you see a green path that I have chosen? Assume that this lengths are very small compared to these lengths. So this is just inside and just outside. When you travel along this closed loop path and come back to the original position, your E bar dot DL should be equal to zero in circulation, right? We are in electrostatic fields. Please understand J is steady. That means this is not a time varying magnetic field condition. Therefore, there is no E star. Okay, so there won't be any non-conservative field. So in conservative field situation, you should always have the circulation being equal to zero. So for that, E in we already said is non-zero into this small L, 
length minus when you go in this direction e out into l also comes into picture these won't contribute towards that because we assume those path lengths are very small so this will be equal to zero and this is not possible if e out is zero we already ascertain e in is not equal to zero you have to have this as not equal to zero in order to satisfy this uh, um, circulation rule so this implies e out is not equal to zero okay so what was the given key and what is the corrected key therefore so this is the conclusion we are making so the given key says uh, that b out is non zero it's fine b at axis is zero that's also fine it's the debate about the electric field okay so a uh, lot of students have this misconception that electric field only inside is non zero and outside it is zero which is wrong okay so the corrected key you have two more options right some students argue that maybe he has taken the uh, resistance of that conductor as zero that right? we'll see that op option also then also the key has to be changed so if resistance was not equal to zero like in the previous page then your b out and b axis match with the given key but the e axis and e out simultaneously have to be non zero or if i am taking it is a perfect conductor okay then e axis if it is considered to be zero, then there is no need of any field inside a perfect conductor for the current to flow. There is no resistance. Okay, so then you can say E out is zero. You cannot have one non-zero and one zero. That was the issue with the key. Okay, so both should be equal to no, uh, zero or both not equal to zero. So keeping this in mind, let's mark the correct key in the original question. I'm assuming resistance is not equal to zero, which is what. I would advise students, if not mentioned in the exam, we should be taking. Okay, right. So it's cylindrical conductor. This is a practical conductor that you are talking about. So in that scenario, electric field at the axis is zero is wrong statement. And magnetic field at the axis of the conductor is zero is the correct one. Electric field in the vicinity of the conductor is zero. That is actually uh, not correct, but was given in the original key and the magnetic field in the vicinity of the conductor is zero is also not right. So the given key was B comma C, it has to be changed to only B. That is the whole understanding here, right? If A is also taken into account, then C will also come. You can argue that it should be either ABC, but BC is definitely a wrong combination of the key. I hope you are ready for the practice problems now. Okay, right. So this is a practice problem one. Uh, looking at the J is equal to sigma E kind of configuration, I have uh, selected this question for our further discussion in Olympiad workout series, right? So we know that for J being uniform inside, you want the field to be uniform, right? So what kind of charge distribution should take place on the surface of a cylindrical conductor? Remember, all this field has to be produced because charge distribution arises in that conductor. It is electrostatic field. Okay, so this nice old Russian Olympiad question investigates the type of charge distribution that enables the E to be uniform along the axis, okay? Even though this is an Olympiad question, this is a, a three-step solution given in the book of Bukutsev and Shalno, right? So in case you want to give it a try, just have a go. Otherwise, if you're struggling, I'll produce a solution in the Olympiad workout series. Uh, three-step solution, each step of it is so beautiful that it can be a JE advanced question, okay? So there's definitely an advantage of going through this one. Let's move on to the practice problem number two. Unsurprisingly, it is from Irido. Again, a less seen problem by the students where a beam of protons in a cylindrical round cross section are moving and it tries to target the electric field calculation on the surface of the beam and also the potential difference between the surface and axis of the beam. So whenever potential difference is asked perpendicular to the direction of flow, right? It will be a very unique concept that uh, requires students understanding. A similar concept appeared as a Hall potential difference in JE 2020 examination. We'll take up that question also. So if you are struggling with this question, I'll produce the solution in the Erdo Select Solutions or already the discussion started in the Discord server regarding this particular question. 
um, amongst the students. Okay, so what is Discord server? Why this is more preferred uh, way of getting faster resolutions? Uh, you can watch the video tutorial in case you are new. And uh, let me tell you, there is a separate Erodo channel for the doubts of Erodo to be discussed in the Discord server. So all the while, it will be very good if you can access it and try it out. In case you don't like it, you always have a uh, chance of getting out of it. Okay, so yeah. So uh, all the love in the last video, uh, I am overwhelmed. I want to work even more, right? So this particular video was not part of the schedule. You made me actually do it with uh, all the likes that you have given. So yeah, again, I repeat for this particular video, 1.5K, which is 1,500 likes. This is to ensure that I get that rest, okay? So if you want to finish off the likes very quickly by sharing it and getting your friends also to get it liked, then I'll be even more happy to produce another video within one or two days or whenever you are actually going to finish off the condition or in case getting those many likes is very difficult, you can also share the content and get 200 more subscribers from this point of time. And also I'll be uploading another video. And as I keep saying, my love also for you is unconditional. Yeah, this is just to motivate me and ensure the channel spreads across uh, please understand the content is free and my uh, love for the content is also going to be uh, there even if we don't reach the target but it will take some time the time that i get leisurely okay so i hope you make me work harder uh, by spreading the content of the channel and please do leave a like share the content and in case you are new and you have not yet subscribed I would suggest watch two or three videos. Uh, you would definitely be inclined towards subscribing. Okay. Thanks for staying this long and see you in the next video.